Welcome back to another lecture. This time we're going to be looking at the great stock market crash of 1929. And our, our goal here is to establish the importance of the event, the stock market crash of October 1929, discuss the context or create a context uh, in which this uh, event happened. And it was a major event that not only in impacted the United States, but had global um, connections as well. And that's something that we begin to see that the United States is part of a larger global community. And what happens in the United States is going to affect the rest of the world and vice versa. So this is a, an interesting topic, an interesting time to try to make sense of this. Not an easy topic. We will have watched a Khan Academy video on the idea of stocks, what a stock is, how prices of stocks are determined, and then why people buy or sell stocks. Um, and that's something that's, uh, I think, fundamental. It's not easy to understand always, and we're going to try our best. So stick with me. We'll see if we can make some sense of this moving forward. So let's take a look at this first screen here. We're using a different format today uh, as opposed to Prezi. The great stock market crash, and we see Irving Berlin, a famous songwriter, playwright of the early 19th, or 20th century, rather, wrote a famous song in 1926 titled Blue Skies. And the song basically conveys the idea that everything in the United States during this decade, this glorious decade, the roaring 20s, was simply put blue skies. Placid, peaceful, positive, optimistic, no problems on the horizon. Uh, there are a few clouds, but they're small. Nothing, nothing really to worry about. And that song really, I think, captured the mood and the attitude of many Americans during that decade. And that was all going to come crashing to an end. We see President Herbert Hoover, who was elected in 1928, a Republican, a fairly conservative Republican, who was committed to the idea of laissez-faire, that is, that the government should do as little as possible to interfere and or regulate the economy. And he said something that was rather interesting. On August 11th, 1928, we in America today are nearer to the final triumph over poverty than ever before in the history of any land. Let me repeat that. We in America today are nearer to the final triumph over poverty than ever before in the history of any land, end quote. He issued that statement as a candidate for president. He would go on to win the presidential elections. And he also famously said that it, at some point, nothing really was wrong, that prosperity was um, really there right around the corner, that there wouldn't be any problems. The other uh, gentleman you see there is uh, an economist from Yale University who was well regarded, widely read, widely published. Um, he was one of these talking heads that everybody placed a lot of faith in. And he said shortly before the crash in September of 1929, this about stocks, and I quote, stock prices have reached what looks like a permanently high plateau, end quote. Permanently high is the idea, again, that goes with this idea of the blue skies, Herbert Hoover's idea that the American economy was in a, in a position to end poverty and that the growth and accumulation of wealth that had occurred in the 1920s and really uh, since the beginning of the 20th century was going to continue unabated into uh, the near future. If I, if I scroll down here then... Uh, there are a couple of words. I think this image here of a limousine pulling up in front of a rather fancy house and people dressed up in elegant dining wear captures the idea of the 1920s, that is, success, style, money, status, and stardom, all part of what we might call the American dream. This all connects and relates to The Great Gatsby, the novel by it. F. Scott Fitzgerald. And uh, uh, to the left of the picture, you see some other words. Uh, one is actually obscured, but optimism, endless, eternal, up, up, and up. So the idea was that the American economy was so strong that the financial institutions, the stock market, American corporations would do so well that progress and growth and accumulation of wealth would be eternal, endless. There was a great deal of optimism. People didn't understand that there are business cycles, and though America had been through very devastating economic downturns, 
People have a short memory, and I think that's worth noting. People have short memories. So when times are good, people tend to push aside uh, the, the thought or the idea or the threat that things might not always be good. And this is certainly true, I think, in large part of the 1920s, as people uh, believed that success and money, and with it the style and the status and the publicity, the stardom that comes with money was possible for everybody. However, that was going to come to a screeching halt by the end of the 1920s. But let's look at into the 1920s a little bit more. Some of the context that I said at the beginning, we want to establish the context. What was going on? Well, here I think we see the cities. This is New York City. In the 1920s, you see the presence of lots of tall buildings, the skyscrapers. People were leaving the rural areas in larger and larger numbers. And by the 1920s, more people live in cities than live in rural areas. And this is a sign. The city is the place where you find jobs. The cities are the places where you have banks and financial institutions. Uh, in New York in particular, you have the stock market on Wall Street. People come for the excitement and the opportunity, as you see there. Uh, the other thing um, that we see is Wall Street itself. Um, the stock exchange, the New York Stock Exchange, pictured there, a Greek revival uh, building and edifice that connects it back to the glories of ancient Greece. The idea of the stock market is a place where people buy and sell stocks. And again, having seen that con video, we understand that stocks are used by corporations um, to raise money, and then stocks are subsequently traded on the stock exchange at various prices, and people buy them principally principally, obviously, to make money. Um, if you have a certain amount of money uh, sitting in a savings account and the rate of interest is very, very low, you're not going to, to make a lot of money. Uh, stocks, on the other hand, promised very high rates of returns. That is, you could take a little bit of money and make it grow into a lot of money. And in the 1920s, this was happening ever faster. So the idea was that if you had a little bit of money, you could invest it in stocks. Now, there is this myth that most Americans own stock. That's simply not true. It's not true today either. Uh, somewhere are around 1 million to 1.5 million people did own stocks in, in the 1920s, and that was a larger number than any other time in America's history. Um, so just to put that sort of myth to rest, not everybody's trading in stocks. 1 to 1.5 million people are. The method that became quite popular in the 20s, and we'll see this a little bit later, is speculation. That is, people would often not have enough money to buy a share of stock. They would then borrow money to buy that stock and with the expectation uh, and hope that the stock price would increase they would be able to then sell the stock pay off the loan and have some money left over in their pocket uh, called profit the more shares you bought the more money you hope to make and this worked wonderfully well when stock prices went up and throughout most of the 1920s there's a steady increase uh, in stock prices that that allowed people to borrow money for to buy stocks pay off their debts um, and profit and become very wealthy the problem with this method of making money through speculation is that when the stock market goes down people then can't pay back the loans and therefore the, the institutions that loan people the money, whether they are banks, private individuals, or even corporations, lose money. And as more and more people lost money, that was going to cause serious problems. Um, in some cases, banks closing, people um, going bankrupt and then having to sell whatever they had, their cars, their homes, jewelry, whatever possessions they could to pay off their debts. So that's going to be the 1920s, I think. Uh, and again, it's, it's you know called the Roaring Twenties. It's a decade of this optimism that we talked about. Let's go on to the next slide and we'll look at the, the major industries. I remember that when we talk about the stock market and we're talking about the stock market crash, stocks are issued by companies that need to raise money to build factories uh, or to build big skyscrapers or to manufacture cars. So some of the biggest industries in the 1920s are the steel manufacturing, and you can see that big steel plant to the left. Building, construction, a very vital part of, uh, of American economy today. In fact, in 2007, we saw a housing crisis and a building crisis that tipped us into a great recession. 
That was no different in the 1920s. You also see the rise of the automobile, something we've talked about. So all the major industries had been booming throughout the 1920s. However, when we look at the data, by 1929, there were fewer sales, fewer profits, and less employment. And that really is a function of a new way of buying things in the United States, and that was to use debt. That is, if you didn't have enough money to borrow a car, you could pay it off over time. You would borrow money from the car maker or a bank to pay the car off right away, and then you would pay it back in installments over time. That meant that people were using debt to finance, finance purposes, uh, purchases. Individuals were using debt. Corporations were using debt. And you can see this gentleman here in the cartoon being crushed by the large uh, debt uh, uh, writing there. So that was something that had gone on. And of course, we also learned in the last slide that people were using debt to buy stocks and speculate that prices would go up and they would be able to pay off debts and make money. So more and more and more. But at one point, uh, Americans had bought cars. Uh, there were enough buildings. There was enough steel being made. There wasn't really much more of a market for these products. How many cars could you have at that point? Uh, the idea of owning one car was sufficient, not like today where some families have three and four cars. So what happened was uh, consumers stopped spending money because they had so much debt. Uh, when they did that, it sort of then put these companies in a disadvantage. They're not selling, they're not making money, and they're not employing people. Well, how does that relate to stocks? Well, stock prices are very much a function of and correlate to the health of a company. Companies that are growing, making new products, selling those new products, innovating, are going to be attractive companies and the prices of their stock, the share price, are going to be high and people are going to want those shares because they feel that if the company continues to do well, the stock price will continue to rise and do well. They will then therefore make money. So what happens was by the time we hit the late 1920s, People had bought and spent uh, really all they could. They had massive amounts of debts. Therefore, companies begin to cut back in production. They're not innovating. They're not offering new products. And so the whole industrial cycle begins to slow down. And that's really what's going to hit the stock market um, after a nine-year run. So let's go on to the next slide. We can take a look at uh, September 3, 1929, a date that's interesting because it was the peak of the market. So see that mountain peak in the background. That's the day the market hit its high uh, after a nine-year run. And the peak was at 381 uh, points uh, on September 3, and that's the Dow Jones. Um, a couple of things happened, though. Uh, during that same month of September. If we look at uh, the picture on the right, you see a guy with a money bag. We've seen that picture before, but you know, there was the London Stock Exchange collapsed, and it was in large part due to a speculator named Charles Hatchery. So the, the guy with the money bag represents this um, speculator, Charles Hatchery, who in large part caused the London Stock Exchange to collapse on September 20th, 1929. Living in a connected economy, this sent shockwaves of fear and panic throughout global markets, including New York. So people began to get edgy and suspect, well, if it can happen in London, it can it happen in New York? Well, uh, despite what some of the economists, Irving Fisher, remember Irving Fisher was saying, no, 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 this can never happen. Stocks are at an all-time plateau. You see down in the, the left, bottom left, a clip from a, a movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, I believe, uh, where there's a teacher, uh, history teacher, beloved history teacher, just like me, trying to teach a class that's not really all that interested in history, and he's trying to teach the Holy Smoot Tariff. Well, there was discussion of, of the tariff, and again, as American industries began to experience difficulties, government stepped in and said, we'll raise tariffs, and that's the tax paid on imported goods. And the thinking was that if the tariff rate goes up, American industries would benefit. There wouldn't be any uh, foreign goods coming into the U.S. market. Therefore, people would be forced to buy U.S.-made goods. All fine and well, however, 
just the discussion of the Holy Smoot tariff, and we were going to raise tariff rates by a lot, just that discussion got people really uneasy about what was going on in the uh, business world, the world of corporations, and therefore it, it uh, uh, flows over into the stock market. And that's what's going to happen. And we see that really the, the, the two dates, October 24th, it's a Thursday, it's called Black Thursday, you can see a headline there, uh, is going to be a day where 11% of the stock market it is lost that is there's a decline and this this really feeds into Tuesday October 29th that's the big day the black Tuesday and what happened too was technology was not very well advanced so information is slow people are learning about this slowly there's panic and fear and everybody wants to sell so thank you for this